Welcome to this PALMS video demonstration looking at the components of soil. If we were to dig a deep hole where there was some soil, we would get something that looks like this, which we call a soil profile. As you go deeper into the hole, you'd see that the soil changes, becoming less fertile until you reach a layer of rock. We're going to be concentrating on just the top soil layer in this demonstration. Let's take a look at what the components of soil are. There are some living and non-living components and all are important for a healthy soil that will help plants grow. First of all, soil contains minerals. These are the weathered or broken pieces of rock and are non-living. Soil also contains humus. This is a very important part of soil and it contains living things such as insects, worms and bacteria along with their products. This is where the nutrients from once living things such as plants and animals are recycled so plants can use them to grow. Next, water and air. These non-living components are essential for a soil to be healthy. We all know dry soil won't help plants grow and soil that is compacted or without air spaces in it also won't allow plants to grow well. Finally, mulch. This is the bits and pieces such as twigs and leaves from plants that were once living. This helps to keep water in the soil and also feeds the nutrient recycling process in humus. Sometimes we add this to soil in our garden. We're going to separate these components out so we can see them clearly and also measure them. This is the equipment you're going to need. First, you'll need some soil from the garden. We've gathered three kinds, but it's okay if you only have one. We want enough soil to fill the container about one third full. The container you need must be clear and tall with a well-fitting lid such as a glass jar or small plastic bottle. You'll be putting the soil into the container so a funnel would be handy, but if you don't have one, a piece of paper can easily make one. A spoon will also help to put the soil in the container. And you'll also need some tap water. Safety is always very important when doing science investigations. For this activity, you'll need to wear gloves when touching the soil. If your soil is very dry, you might need to consider wearing a face mask and safety glasses and try to avoid breathing in any soil particles. Make sure you wash your hands with soap when you have finished and be careful if you're using glass containers in case they break. Now, let's show you how to set up your investigation. Have all of your equipment ready to go. If you don't have a funnel, you can use a piece of paper like this. The funnel is a little easier, so we're going to use that. Put your gloves on before touching the soil. Spoon the soil into the funnel. You need to fill the container about one third full with soil. Sometimes larger bits might get stuck, so you can clear them with the spoon and tip them into the container. When the container is one third full, pour in the tap water, leaving a small gap at the top to help when you shake it. It's a bit messy, so doing it outside is a good idea. Make sure the lid is on securely and then shake the container for about 15 seconds, making sure all of the soil gets mixed with the water. Then put it to one side. We also prepared some other soil such as this one from the Pilbara and one from a different part of the garden. It's okay if you only have one, but we thought you might like to see how other soils act. Leave the soils to settle and separate for several minutes, checking on them every minute or so. Here's how ours looked after one minute. Then after three minutes. And finally, after five minutes. You might like to take photos if you have a camera so you can see the difference as time passes. The water will become clearer the longer you leave the soil to settle. So what is it that you are seeing in your separated soil? 
All soils will look a bit different, but let's look at the one that we prepared earlier. The layer floating on top is the mulch. This is the once living twigs and leaves. The next layer down is the water. Sometimes the water may be a browny orange colour due to some things dissolving out of the soil. Hopefully you'll be able to see a thin layer of dark humus next. This is the living component of the soil where bacteria help things to rot and add nutrients to the soil. The final layer at the bottom of the jar is the mineral layer. This is the broken pieces of weathered rock that make up the bulk of the soil. Sometimes soils are not very fertile. For example, this soil from the Pilbara that we prepared doesn't have any mulch or humus layers. The soil is not very fertile and plants in this area have adapted to live in this harsh environment by collecting and storing water and nutrients themselves. We're going to measure the amount of humus in soil to work out how healthy and fertile the soil is. For this, you'll need a ruler or measuring tape. First, measure the height of just the humus layer that sits on top of the mineral layer. Write this measurement down. For our soil, it was one centimetre. Next, measure the height of both the mineral and humus layer, so from the bottom of the jar to the bottom of the water layer. Write this measurement down also. For our soil, it was 3.2 centimetres. We can then calculate the percentage of humus in the soil. You'll probably need a calculator for this. Use the number you got for the height of the humus layer. For us, it was one centimetre. Divide this by the number you got for the height of the mineral and humus layer together. For our sample, this was 3.2 centimetres. Then, to make it a percentage, multiply the result by 100. Our soil has 31.25% humus, which is pretty good. How much does your soil have? Congratulations, now you're an expert soil scientist. You might like to try these challenges also. You could compare the humus content of soil from different places, perhaps from your friends' gardens. Take a look at where you took your soil from. Do plants grow well there? Most plants need at least 10% humus to grow well. You could draw a column graph to show the amount of each of the four soil components in your sample. Grab a magnifying glass and take a close look at your soil. Make a list of the living and non-living things that you find. It's always important to clean up after an investigation, so put your gloves back on and start the clean up. And don't forget to wash your hands well with soap and water. Thanks for watching and don't forget you can find lots more fun activities like this all about earth science on the Palms website.